Okay, so first of all, we need to set the preferences. Now, this may seem like the boring part, but it doesn't take long to do. And then once you've done it once, you've done it, and you can forget about the preferences. So first of all, we're going to look at the the general page. So to get to preferences, we go to edit. And at the bottom, we have preferences, and we need to make sure that you're on the general page. So if you if you can't see the word general, then you can use the drop down menu or the scroll keys to go through the different pages. Okay, so make sure you're on the general page and first of all we have the mouse knob range now this chooses the sensitivity of the knobs and faders when you move them with the mouse if I just leave that set on normal which is good enough for me then to actually move a knob and a fader if you move your cursor on top and then click and hold the left mouse button and then when you move the mouse up or move it down you can see that the knob moves and same with the faders if you click and hold the left mouse button move up and down you can see it moves so that preference it just determines how well it determines the sensitivity of that movement and uh, a quick tip is that if you want to return something in reason to its default condition okay any knobs and faders then you can simply hold down the control key and then left click and then it jumps back to its default condition okay so that's that one now the automation cleanup level I'll change this to minimum and I'll show you what that actually does if we go down to the sequencer and I'll quickly draw in a clip and double click on it and I'll draw in a little automation curve and you can see here now we have these black parts okay now the these are known as vector points and if you click on these you can alter the shape of the well the waveform now because there's so many vector points there it's very hard to pick out individual ones so if I control Z just to undo that now if I change the preference again and I'll change that to normal then you'll notice that when I draw in the same kind of curve it will clean it up and only leave a few vector points now this is better for me personally because it means that you can click on individual points and you can easily move them around to alter the shape but as before there's so many then it's very hard to alter individual ones but that's down to personal preference and it's the way you want to use reason okay so now we have the cable animation this is just uh, something that looks pretty cool you can it doesn't really affect reason that much one of the good things in reason okay is one of the things that gives reason a lot of power is the fact that you can alter the cabling at the back of these devices and to get to the back you simply hit the tab key on your keyboard okay now if you notice these cables okay see the movement that preference it simply turns that movement on and off maybe if you've got a, a slow CPU then this will save a little bit of CPU power but it's not that much to be concerned about it's just I'll leave it on because it just looks pretty cool okay the show parameter value tooltip if you move your cursor on on top of anything in reason okay any sliders any knobs you get a description and also the value that it's set to okay this filter frequency is set to 115 and anything else you always get a description of what it is and if you are working on big projects and you want to make notes of certain settings then these tooltips do come in quite useful but same again that's just down, it's just down to personal preference the show automation indication once you automate uh, something in reason you get a green box okay you can see here this filter frequency has been automated and there's a green box showing that it is automated and this preference it's simply if you keep your eye on that green box okay it just turns it on and off the automation is still there but it just doesn't show you that it's automated I do recommend you keep that on I personally do because once you start working on large projects and you have a lot of automation it's good to know what's being automated and what isn't now the uh, default song I quickly I'll tick the empty rack and so the default song it's simply if you open up a new song 
then you you get what it says okay you get an empty rack so the rack is empty and all you have is the sequencer the hardware interface at the top and the transport bar at the bottom and if I change that preference to built in this means that you will get built uh, reasons built in default song and so if I go to file and new and you notice that the you have the hardware interface at the top you have the M class mastering suite and you also have a mixer and then you have the sequencer and transport bar as well so that's quite a good uh, good one to have because you virtually always need a mixer and uh, the M class mastering suite is always good to have there because I personally have that in my my own template and then the third option is to have your a custom template now in future tutorials I'll show you how to create and save your own template and I do recommend you do because it gives you a better workflow okay so you can start each each new project with a, t a, a template that you're used to and familiar with so custom there and that's my template I call it template one and so if I go to file and new you can see here's my my template okay I have some uh, some effects in there I have a scream unit and the M class mastering suite and a mixer okay so edit and preferences again so that's the default song now the miscellaneous uh, CPU usage limit now when you start working on projects in reason some of these projects can get quite large and when you start using devices like the subtractor and the maelstrom they use a lot of CPU power and this determines how much of your total CPU power reason will use the default is 80 percent and it is recommended uh, that you keep that at 80 percent it's personally down to you so it means that reason will use 80 percent of the total power and it will leave 20 percent for other devices that are running in the background so maybe you you'll have to experiment with that and see how that goes the use high resolution samples uh, reason can play back 24-bit resolution and 16-bit resolution samples with this tick with this box ticked it means that 24-bit resolution samples will play back as 24-bit resolution samples and 16-bit will play back as 16-bit if you untick this then it means that all 24-bit samples will play back as 16-bit resolution samples so that's down to your own preference and same again just experiment with that and see how that goes uh, the final one is the low default song uh, sound in new devices if we leave that ticked for the moment and we just scroll down to an empty rack okay if I just drag in a maelstrom then you'll see there that it's loaded in with a uh, a patch already in there okay it's called Vespa now if I just control Z to undo that and if I go to my preferences and if I untick that and this time when I load in the maelstrom it will load in with no sound okay there would be no patch in there and it says there initialize patch and so all you get is just the oscillator A is enabled and you just get a pure sine wave so same again as in reason there are a lot of things that are down to personal choice and that one also it's just down to personal choice and how you want to use reason hopefully it all depends if you want to have a sound already loaded up or whether you just want to uh, make your own patches okay so there we have the general page